So the first two steps of going back and campfiring up for God is, of course, the walk and then the road, right? So we got to fix how we walk and fix the road that we're going on. And that's going to be the importance of us coming to Christ and the campfire, okay? Just like I said, we discussed a few things on the first steps, right? First, we talked about how to change our walk. Because most of us think that the drip slash swag or whatever, how old you are, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. But whatever you think that your walk is or whoever your style is, we have to change that. Because a lot of us think that when we, we walk with it, with our swag or our walk, it's sufficient for a successful life. And I think that's the, the biggest misconception in terms of who we are and how we are developing in life. Because we think that if I have this certain type of status... Right? We think we have a certain type of status, a certain type of thing about us, then we're going to be great and nobody can tell us anything. But what happens when our drip and our swag goes away? Right? What happens when people don't see us as an icon, they see us as a regular person? Who are you now? But the next part is then we have to go into a path when we try to go on in this world. And is it actually the best for us? Right? Why follow when we can create our own destiny? And that path could be anything. That path could be you're trying to um, get up in the rank of a job, go in terms of promotion. Whatever your path is, kind of fixate where you're going, right? Kind of put all your intentions, right? Your motivation all toward that. Feel like, oh, we should be there. Oh, I should do this because I want to get to that person's level. But that person's level may not be sufficient for a successful life for your life. So first, I want everybody to go to Galatians chapter one. The premise of this is, who are we serving, right? Because in that style, our style, right? Our walk, our path. These are things we have to understand and, and just figure out. Who are we serving? But by Jesus Christ and, the, and God the, the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the brothers and sisters with me, to the churches in Galatia, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age, according to the will of God and Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Right? So this already tells us from Galatians chapter 4. Right? I'm going to read it again. Galatians chapter 1, verse 4 says, who, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age. Right? So God already written our story for us, right? Whoever you are, he's already written your story. He knows where you're going. He knows where your mindset is going to be at. He knows what challenges are going to come your way. It's already pre-written. If you're a person, you know what I'm saying, living today, even uh, a dog or a tree, your, sentence, your story is already written in terms of where you're going to be at in this life. Chapter 4, uh, verse 4, it says, He gave himself to our sins to rescue us from the present evil age. The reason why God, Jesus died for us, he wanted to save us, right? Because we knew that our sins... The adversity, the triumph will be too big for us to handle for ourselves, right? But only if you come to God and understand that he is our stronghold, that's the only time you can fight that off. If you try to fight for yourselves, you can fight a couple battles for yourself, right? No matter how strong you are, you can fight a couple battles. How long can you keep fighting if you allow yourself to just fight battles for yourself? Uh, know that God is going to be there for you always. So the next part is um, chapter, uh, verse 6 through 10. Okay, so this is the last part of our, um, our reading. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 through 10. So this is the last part, okay? So what it says is, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we are an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you. Let them be under God's curse. As we have already said, so now I say again, if anybody is preaching to you a gospel other than what you accepted, let them be under God's curse. Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people if I were still trying to please people I will not be a servant of Christ. Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? We're still trying to please people. I will not be a servant of Christ. So that's the thing like what I say back on Sunday, right? A lot of things go hand in hand. 
So when you're going to a campfire, so of course the series is Campfire of Christ. So when you're going to that campfire, you need two things. You need a compass and a map. And those things have to go together in order for you to be successful, right? So like I said in here, you can't try to please other people, please other validations of people about who you are and try to still serve God at the same time. Because you have to think about it like this. You can't try to live yourself and idolize people and try to go out your way, your morals, your lessons in life, just to say, okay, this person accepts me. This person loves me, so I'm going to just stay on this path because it's, it's feeling really good. It's feeling really good. It's feeling really good. But we've been through enough heartaches. If you're like a young adult, we've been through a lot of heartaches to the point where people have let us down so many times, but we've devoted our attention and path toward that person so many times that it just crashed and burned us, right? So like verse 10 of Galatians chapter 1 says, if we're to serve God, we cannot continue to serve other people because you can't do both. If you're saying that you want God to be your stronghold, you want God to be the number one person in your life, then you have to turn away from looking for validation from other people, looking for people's follows, the, the likes. I know I talked to somebody out there. We, we can't live for those things because if you live for that, that's what you're going to die by, right? At the end of your life, you're going to say, you know what? I live this life looking for likes and follows and validation from other people. I know that hit a lot of people out there. But let's be clear. Whoever you decide to walk with will sooner or later get tired and lead you astray. Can't keep following others' approvals. Okay? This is a big point because I want everybody to understand that when you're walking with somebody, right, you continue to walk with somebody, you're having a little good little walk, right? Sooner or later, that person will get tired. Maybe your legs is built for adversity, right? But the person that you're stringing along, they're not. So now you're getting weighed down. Now it's a luggage. Now that person is holding you back from your destiny. But what you do is, because you love that person, you love that validation, you love that the likes and follows, you love the materialistic things, you love the Gucci, the Prada, the Birkin bag, whatever it is, you love that so much that you're willing to hold back yourself to bring it along with you, right? Because that thing is being tired out from where you want to go in life. So that, that thing or that person is like, nah, you going a little too crazy. You have a big thing about yourself. I, I can't do it anymore. Like that's a lot, lot for me, right? But you want to bring them along so much that you're dragging, you're dragging, not realizing that you're slowing yourself down. You're tiring yourself out. Because when we follow other things and try to chase those validations, there's no way that you can continue to go on the speed or where God wants you to go because you're chasing something else. Okay, y'all? So we can't keep allowing ourselves to chase other people's approvals because all thing that's going to do for us is just tire us out. <laughs> all right? Let's keep on. Let's keep it going a little bit, y'all. So, of course, this is the, um, the, the verse that we talked about when we read um, Galatians chapter 1. And if you're out there and you haven't read Galatians chapter 1 um, with us, please do so and read it uh, again. But, of course, what it says is, for, I, for am I now seeking the approval of man or of God? Or am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. All right, so that's just the verse that I wanted everybody to look at. And it's really powerful, so screenshot or do whatever but definitely look at this later so now ask yourself what path are you going down now okay we all have a path for ourselves we all have a vision for ourselves and we all have something that we want to get done in this life but even for myself i don't know what's going on right i think i hit it like a little little rough point where i'm just like dang god where, where am i going now right what am i doing now what is my next point because i'm a person where I want to have a sense of, all right, I'm going to get to this day to get to here, right? I'm going to do this, I'm going to get here. I'm going to do this so I can continue to have my spirits lifted up. But right now, I'm, I'm kind of in a little point where I'm just like, it just feel like every day is just running together. Every day is running together, right? So, but when you understand that if you fixate on whatever you want to do in this life, it will always drag you to that certain point, right? If you have... A thing that you say, I don't know what's going on in my life, but I always want to be a CEO, right? If you, if one day, you know, you rest. The second day, you are making phone calls to that company. The third day, you're actually emailing that company. 
the fourth day you may go up to the, the job where it is and you try to get yourself that job. Those may not seem like big things, but you're slowly gravitating yourself to becoming a CEO of that company because you're trying to get yourself immersed in that realm, right? So those are things that's kind of, you can drag yourself along to that path, but you can also see other things was going to drag you away from your path, right? Say you call, you want to call that company one day, right? The second day, somebody in your life says, you know what? Hey, let's go, let's go drink here. Right. OK, now the third day you're going over to some party um, and you're drinking and everything, blah, blah, blah. The fourth day. Now they say, hey, hey, let's go over here. Let's let's um, do this. Now you're going over there. Right. As you can see, the two, there's two stories where you're trying to better yourself. Right. The one story every single day you're doing something to get into that company. Now, the second story was you try to call the company. And now the second and third day, you're now trying to. You're following other people. Other people are saying, oh, let's go drink and do this, right? Now, you can do all those things, but as long as you're still remembering your purpose. Because a lot of people, they forget their purpose and they try to live in the moment so much. They're saying, oh, yeah, I'm going to live my best life. I'm living my best life right now. I'm young. I might as well live my best life. But in those circumstances, we have to understand that you can live your best life, but you got to remember what your purpose is. Living your purpose, not in the world's fun time. Okay. So I want everybody to kind of think about this. I'm going to kind of, I'm going to kind of bring it all together, right? In terms of where you are mentally and where you should engage where your path is, because like this series is pick another road, pick that road that's going to lead you down to glory, right? So think about a boat who doesn't have an engine, right? Usually when you want to just chill out on the sea, you turn off the engine and it just, it just floats, right? The boat is going to float. The boat's going to float. So you're chilling on the sea and then the engine's off, okay? The boat may just be chilling, right? Bobbing and chilling, living his best life. Like I know a lot of people like to say, I live my best life, I'm young, I'm, I'm, I'm full of life. I'm going to live my best life to the fullest and nobody can tell me nothing. I don't care what nobody says. I'll worry about my life later, right? I got a long life to live. You hear a lot of people say that when they say, I don't have to know what I want to do in my life. I don't have to know about my passions. I don't have to know what I want to be. In this world because I have time. I'm not going to rush because I know that I'm going to get there one day. But not worrying about the consequences of the seas is going to be your biggest demise. The consequences of this world is if you keep living your best life, you may be going into financial debt. You may be going into a, a bad roller coaster. You may be not getting that job. That job may be going further and further away from you because you're not even in the, the experiences. Say if you're going to be a pro pro player and, and whatever you're doing, right? If you keep allowing everybody to mess up your mind, mess up the things you have in your life, you're going to get further and further away from building your skill sets, right? You're going to get further away from actually getting on that team that you want to get on. Whatever it may be, the consequences of the seeds of living your best life is going to get further and further away from you. But when will it kick in that when storms or adversities come, that the, the same boat will get knocked away easily because they don't have a strong source of power in, it, in its life during that time, right? So if you keep trying to vibe out and chill, you live your best life, right? Just like how this sea is getting knocked around because of this storm, that's what it looks like when you don't have a source of power or source of um, God in your life because what God is going to provide is power. God is going to provide that, that knowledge. God is going to provide the things that you need in this life to be successful in your own way, okay? Because what I don't want everybody to realize is that there is no one source track of like success. Because what everybody on social media sees is you have the nicest car, the nicest uh, house, you have the nicest people around you, and you, it looks lit. It looks so much fun. Like you want that life, and that's what you're trying to push for all your life. But if you keep trying to do that, oh, I'm gonna live my best life. I'm gonna chase other people's validation. I'm gonna chase that person. You're going to keep getting knocked around because you, you have not been trying to chase the person who's trying to give you that power in his life, a.k.a. God. So some people put their trust in the world and people who give them validation, people who are living for likes and followers. Can, can y'all picture and see people on your page that they're doing things against their morals and lessons that you already know, right? Because we can't judge other people based if we don't know them. Right, but we know people in this life that we know their morals 
and, and, and like life lessons, but you see them just chasing people's, hey, that looked really good. Oh my gosh, good job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at what's the expense, right? Can't you imagine those people are the same people who ask you for money? I've myself ran across people who I know personally that was so, oh my gosh, look at my look at my nice uh, jeans that cost eight hundred dollars. And look at my like my Balenciagas I got on my feet. They cost six hundred. But now you asking me, hey, let me get ten dollars for gas. Okay? Cause it's no it's no problem having those likes and followers and money and stuff, as long as you have your path figured out. If you're following that path, it's okay. But are you still following that path of your life, right? Because all that will, won't get you through that storm. That's what I call a paddle boat mindset. So the paddle boat mindset, this is the paddle boat, right? It's, it's, it's real cool you know, if you like water. I don't like water. So when I, when I did it, dog, I was scared. I was going stupid. I was like, nah, bro, give me, give me back to the shore. But the, this is called the paddle boat mindset. It may feel good. You're living your best life. You're chilling. You, you, you're enjoying life. There's nothing wrong with enjoying life. So when I say don't live your like, when I keep talking about living your best life is kind of bad, I'm not saying it in the fact that you should never live your best life. But what I am saying is your path should be always priority. Where you want to go in this life should always be priority more than living your best life for something else, right? But what happens when it goes away? What happens when that really feel good moment and being in the paddle boat and living your best life goes wrong? Where do you turn in? Where is your next motivation at then? So I have um, a quick verse for everybody. It's 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4. What that says is, But just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, so we speak not to please man, but to please God who tests our heart. So, Let's just look at the last bit of that, right? So we speak not to please man, but to please God who tests our heart. When I talk about, you know, looking for God's validation, looking for God's path for our lives, that's important because we have to fixate ourselves toward his ways, right? Just how I was talking about every single day you should kind of do something, even though it looks like you're not going anywhere. Every single day, let's try every single action, right? If, if you don't see yourself cutting out every, all the bad things that you have going on in your life, just go one day by day, week by week, month by month. Just try to find out a way to come back to God, right? Because we all live the life and always, you know, we, we're living on earth. So, of course, we're going to want validation from other people in, in some form or fashion. And that's not a thing you can just shake off in one day, you know? And you have to break yourself down and say, okay... This validation, these likes and followers that I'm trying to get is not really important in terms of my progression in life. Maybe it is in terms of if your job or what you want to do in this life is kind of predicated on popularity. Maybe, right? But the biggest point I'm trying to make is when we please God, God is the person who's going to test our hearts. God is the person who only can give us the blessings. These other people can give us temporary blessings, but those blessings aren't going to be sufficient in our success. If you follow along, that's what I'm trying to say. All right, so that's the um, that's the verse I want everybody. First Thessalonians chapter two, verse four. Really good. Try to write that down as well. So, the biggest thing is, like we've talked about, when you pick that path, you have to pick a rescuer. God wants to save you from whatever happens in this life, right? But He can only protect those who who go to Him in refuge in troubles. So, like we were saying in the storms, right, that, that boat, the boat that, that's just sailing, living his best life, right, not doing anything, don't have a care in this world, that boat is going to be devastated if it doesn't have a source of power. If it doesn't have that source of God in his life or that thing that's going to help it keep moving, then there's going to be no good, right? And a lot of people may say, I do have a source of power in this life, right? I don't, I, I can deal with my problems by myself. These likes and these followers, these things I'm chasing, this materialistic jeans and shoes and all this stuff is going to get me through this life because I know what I can get through. But in that, that's the paddle boat mindset. You thinking that these validation, these followers and, and this chasing the clout and chasing other people's, oh my gosh, that looks really good. That's a paddle boat mindset. And that paddle boat mindset ain't going to get you through 
that storm that you're trying to battle through in your life. Because at the end of the day, that thing that you're trying to chase, that paddle boat that you're riding on, is going to get you stuck in that storm. And that's going to lead you down a demise and destruction in your life, right? So we have to pick the rescuer who's going to actually get us through this life, okay? Because we got to think about it like this. Will you continue to chase the love of people, validation, or will you decide to God to chase God's graces and guidance? So what God in, in will do for us is so much more powerful than what we can try to chase. You, you, you get what I'm saying? Because a lot of people can only give us a certain couple, couple things, right? We're trying to walk to that campfire of Christ, like the series is. Walk to the campfire of Christ, but we can't walk toward that campfire if we continue to keep dragging along the people who we think is in our lives, right? Those people are the getting us through, right? The validation, the likes, the followers, like I keep saying, right? But I just wanted to, to, to register to us that we don't need it. Sometimes I have to tell myself that the likes and followers don't mean nothing, right? If I lose 10 followers today because I talk about God, that doesn't mean that I should stop talking about God, right? And sometimes it get down on me. Sometimes when I have a good game, people don't congratulate me. If I have a bad game, people are talking, hey, Dwayne, you didn't do that good. When I'm trying to chase other people's validation for myself in terms of like basketball, I'm trying to, oh, I got to go, I got to get 30 today. I got to do this because people are talking about me bad. But I have to chase what is going to get me through with God. I can't continue to keep chasing these other people because these other people are going to be wishy-washy. They're always going to tell you where they think you should go. They're going to tell you what you should do for your life because they say, you know what? Because I'm already doing it, you should do it too because that's how you fit in. That's how you have a good bond. But a good bond is going to only save you from situations that's not good for you. They're not going to bring you into it, right? Because if they know your path, they're going to say, you know what? Even though I'm on this path, I'm going to let you keep going because that's I'll support you. These are a sign of good bonds that you should keep in your life. The people who's not going to rush you into what they're doing, but just keeping you on your own path. Okay? So when you pick that path, pick that road, understand that God is there for you so he can guide you through this life. But he can't help you if you don't go to him. Right? So starting today, let's try to cut out something that we suffer from. Right? If, if, if it's we're trying to chase likes and followers. Let's try to cut that out. If it's to say, you know, uh, I want to cut out um, partying. I want to cut out drinking. I want to cut out smoking. I want to cut out, you know, being critical of myself. Those, all it, being critical of yourself can take you away from your path just as much as um, drugs and stuff because you're in your own mind. But you have to understand that God is the one that's going to control that, right? No matter how strong you think you are, God's the only person who can save you from that. But you have to condition yourself to get through it. So the last thing I have for everybody before we get out of here is John chapter 3, verse 16. And I think this is a pretty standardized verse that is strong to a lot of people. And I think it can be strong for you too out there, right? So this is the last thing before I cut out of here. But what John chapter 3, uh, John chapter 3, verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Have, should not perish, but have eternal life. So if you believe in him, no way is your life going to be bad. No way that somebody's going to tell you that your life is not good enough. Nobody's going to tell you that you should live your best life and you should chase these things and try to condition yourself to have those things because you had to Live for yourself. You got to follow God. Believe in him. Believe that God's going to get you through those tough times and rough times and, and just those sad times. Right? I myself am battling through kind of like a little mental battle. But what I want to try to put myself through is I'm going to focus on God through all of this. Because, you know, constantly I'm just like, dang, my life is bad. My life is bad. Maybe I should just try to... Go with other people. Try to, you know what I'm saying? Just try to get myself toward other people. Because sometimes I think, okay, maybe all this hard work I'm doing is for no reason. And that's where I'm at in this day stage, right? But in that, I have to understand that it's God that's going to help me get back right. It's not 
change up my path to appease other people so I can feel good when I'm not feeling good. We have to find that feel good feeling with God. So no matter how bad you get, how bad your mental stage gets, like myself, I have to just keep going and you do too. So whatever it is, don't change your path. And if it's a bad path, you feel like you're going down, go back to God and power yourself with the power source that's going to get you through those tough storms. Because if you keep trying to do the paddle boat, right, and keep trying to let other people validate where you are and help those people to help you get it right, one day it's not going to be there. One day that paddle boat ain't going to keep going past that big storm. The only person who can save you from that storm is God. Appreciate y'all. And I'll catch y'all later.